In this movie, you learn to import and export startup templates in order to share them with others. Start or reset 3ds Max. If the welcome screen is not displayed, call it up from the help menu. Click the link to access the template manager. On this system, you can see the original five sample templates that are installed by default starting with 3ds Max 2015 extension 2. There is also one additional custom template named AO Pass that you may not have on your system. This is a custom template that you learn to build and add to the library after watching the movie named Creating Custom Startup Templates. Before you import and export templates, take a look at where they are stored. Select any of the five sample templates that has a scene file associated with it, such as the studio scene. Take a look at the path under Scene File. It is pointing to the 3ds Max 2015 install folder and to a Startup Templates folder under the localized 3ds Max version, in this case, English US. Use Windows Explorer to navigate to that folder. You can even use copy and paste to that effect. In this folder, you'll find all the files pertinent to the five sample templates. These include thumbnail images and a series of XML files that store settings information. Some templates may have additional XML files based on the options you've chosen. For example, the studio scene has a view settings XML file because this option is enabled in the template manager. It doesn't have a view cube XML file because that option is disabled. The architectural scene, on the other hand, has both XML files because both these options are active. There are also four subfolders that store the startup max scene files and any associated texture maps. Note that there is no subfolder for the classic startup as this template invokes an empty scene. However, note that the data for the custom template, AO Pass, is nowhere to be seen. Well, for one thing, the associated Mac scene is in a totally different place, in this case in the custom SU templates folder on the C drive. If I were to check that folder, I can see the Max file but none of the associated XML files. This is because when you save a custom template, the template manager automatically saves that information under your username. In a new Windows Explorer session, navigate to your username on the C drive. Next, you need to access the App Data subfolder, which is hidden by default. Simply append App Data to the current path. Now go to the local subfolder and then to Autodesk 3ds Max 2015-64-bit ENU. From there, you'll find your localized version, English US in my case, and the startup templates underneath. This is where the information on your custom templates is stored. This includes XML data and the PNG thumbnail that shows in the template manager and the welcome screen. Still, the XML data and thumbnail is in one place and the startup Mac scene in another. It also seems like a lot of file hunting to round up all the necessary files. This is where import-export comes into play. If I were to select the custom AOPass template and export it, I can choose an export folder and a name. Once it's saved, it creates a special folder with a saved name and a .template.ex suffix. This contains all the necessary files to transfer a custom template from one system to another. Test it out, as this folder has been provided to you as part of the zip archive you downloaded for this tutorial. If you already have the AOPass template listed in the Template Manager, go ahead and delete it. This in fact clears it out from under your username. Now use the import tool 
and navigate to where you stored the aopass.template.ex folder. Select it and click OK. The custom template is available again. This time, the associated Mac scene is stored under your username along with the needed XML files and thumbnail. You can close the template manager or if you like, you can import another custom template that's been provided to you. It is named Turntable and is part of the files you downloaded for this tutorial. It is meant for product design rendering in a turntable style, but really can be used to highlight any model you can potentially conceive. The scene uses the Mentor Ray renderer and Mentor Ray spotlights in a three-point lighting scenario. There's a red helper that's animated to rotate 360 degrees and a sample teapot linked as a child object. You can of course hide or delete the teapot to make room for your own objects. When you create or merge your own models, you can scale them to size. and simply link them to the turntable helper so they can rotate with it. It's a useful technique and as mentioned it is often used for product design but can really highlight any type of design from architecture to game characters and props. You now know how to export startup templates you create or import ones provided to you or found online. With that knowledge, you can now build your library and store startup templates that are useful to your kind of work.